When archaeologists or researchers discover an artifact from the distant past, they can usually give a reasonable explanation for what it might be. Ceramics, pottery, and carvings are easy to understand just by looking at them. Not everything comes with a ready-made explanation, though. All the items you're about to see in this video come from long ago and far away, but the secrets of their purposes are a mystery lost to time, and scientists cannot explain their existence. You might think that the Archilochori axe would be an easy enough object to explain the purpose of. After all, it's an axe, and we know what axes are used for. It's just that most axes made 4,000 years ago weren't this elaborate, and we don't believe the people of the time would have gone to so much trouble decorating and inscribing an axe if they were just going to use it to chop down trees or attack their enemies. The axe was found in a cave in Crete in 1934 and has 15 separate symbols on it, which defy all attempts at translation. Some researchers say that the inscriptions bear a resemblance to Linear A, an early form of writing used by the ancient Minoans. But the similarity isn't strong enough to say it's the same thing, or that it was made by the same people. There's also a resemblance between the inscriptions on the Archilochori axe and the Phaistos disc. But the Phaistos disc is equally mysterious, so that doesn't help us much either. The Salzburg Cube also goes by the name of the Wolf's Egg Iron, but giving it two names doesn't get us any closer to explaining why it was made. It didn't occur naturally. It's an oddly shaped lump of iron with four flat sides and two convex sides, measuring around six inches tall and six inches wide, and it was found in Hosruck, Austria in 1885. The whole object is lined by a deep groove, which has been carved through it almost to the midway point. The composition and markings on the cube indicate that it's been altered by human hands, but the seam of coal it was found in is 20 million years old. It was initially believed to be a fallen meteor, but every element contained within the cube has a terrestrial origin, so that theory has had to be ruled out. The current working hypothesis is that it was used as ballast in early mining machinery, as the coal deposit it was found within hadn't been mined before, that seems just as unlikely as the meteor origin idea. The Disc of Death sounds like a weapon that a villain might have in a superhero movie, but it's a genuine historical artifact that was found in Mexico City in 1964. At the center of the disc is an intimidating smiling skull with a tongue protruding from its teeth, surrounded by a wheel that may have been intended to represent the rays of the sun. While we don't know its purpose, we know that it was created by and belonged to the Teotihuacan civilization and is approximately 2,000 years old. It was found buried in the ground right in front of the Pyramid of the Sun, which implies that it has either religious or ceremonial importance. It might even be a depiction of the Teotihuacan god of death, a charming deity known Miklantakuti. There are several burial sites around the pyramid, which isn't surprising, because we know that human sacrifice was practiced by the Teotihuacan people. Maybe this scary sculpture has something to do with that, but that's just a guess. Our next strange artifact is a disco, but it's not the kind of disco anybody can dance in. It's the Disco Colgant, which some people believe might be an early map of our galaxy, Nobody can deny that there's a strong similarity between the design of the disc, with a ball at the center and spiraling arms extending from it, resembles the appearance of a spiral galaxy. There's also a smooth round hole in one of the arms, roughly where our own sun sits in the Milky Way. Such knowledge should have been impossible to obtain for the people who made the disc Colgant, though. Depending on who you believe, it could be anything up to 2,000 years old, but at the very minimum, it's 400. Logic and reason tell us that it can't be a galactic map. But then we have to ask ourselves, what else could it be? Who would design an accurate galactic map and use it for any other purpose than mapping the stars? Does this belong to a long forgotten race of space travelers? Or is the whole thing just a strange coincidence? 
sometimes the name of an area gives context to the things that archaeologists find there. This strange-looking stone was unearthed in 1992 in Kupang, Indonesia, in a cave on the Devil's Hill, which is also known as the Mount of Satan. Oddly colored rocks are nothing unusual because nature has a broad color palette, but the inscriptions and carvings on the rock have created a mystery nobody has thus far been able to solve. The rock almost appears to be two different stones somehow fused together, and upon its surface are etched pictures of the sun and the stars of the night sky. Arrows are pointing between the stars, as if they're supposed to indicate potential travel routes. Look a little closer, and you'll see humanoid figures, along with a crude interpretation of the design of our native solar system. Studies have proven that the rock is magnetic and very slightly radioactive. There's one more strange thing to note. The carvings bear a passing resemblance to the plaques placed on the Pioneer aircraft that were launched in the 1970s. What could all of this possibly mean? In 2011, a solid metal ball fell out of the skies and landed on the grasslands of Namibia. The smooth, spherical object weighs exactly 13 pounds, and the bumps on its top and its base indicate intelligent design. Scientists who tested it at the time confirmed that it doesn't have an alien origin, but weren't able to draw any conclusion about what it is and where it might have come from. Given that it seems to have fallen from space, we can't but help but wonder why they were so quick to rule out the alien origin theory. The sphere is made from a complicated metal alloy, the sort of thing that could be manufactured on Earth. Just because someone could make it here doesn't mean that they would, though. It doesn't have any apparent purpose. No space agencies have put forth a claim on the object, and so sadly it seems we may never know where it came from, or what it is. The Hermetica are a mystery in their own right. They're a series of Greek and Indian writings from 1800 years ago that communicate the entire philosophy of Hermeticism. There's one individual piece of the Hermetica that's more mysterious than all the rest, and that's the Emerald Tablet. It's said that the tablet contains the basis of the Philosopher's Stone, and therefore the secrets of turning any other substance into gold. If that's true, it's a real shame that nobody can work out how to interpret it. Even its origins are controversial. Despite the connection with the second century texts, some researchers believe that the Emerald Stone is a more recent work, first written in Arabic around the time of the 18th century. Because of competing beliefs, nobody can say with any certainty what the exact origin of the Emerald Tablet is. It may indeed hold the secret to creating gold, or it might just be an elaborate forgery made by an Arabic prankster centuries ago. The first thing you should know about the so-called Dresden Codex is that it isn't from Dresden, and nor do its origins lie in Germany. It may be held in a museum there now, but it was written in pre-Columbian Mexico, probably during the 11th century in Chichen Itza. It also might be a replica. Experts who've studied it believe it's a copy of a lost work that was written around 300 years earlier than that. Like many artifacts that come covered in inscriptions and pictures from ancient Mexico, it's said to prophesize the end of the world. It's far more likely that it's an impressive early astral chart, used to determine when lunar and solar eclipses are likely to occur. The movements of both the Moon and Venus are identified in detail on the Codex, and would have helped the people who owned it to plan for special religious occasions and celebrations. That's the official explanation, anyway. The problem with doomsday prophecies is that you can't say whether they're right or wrong until doomsday happens, so the people who believe that it's a doomsday prediction may still be right. The ancient Egyptians made ornate carvings of every creature imaginable, from crocodiles to insects and including birds. That means you're unlikely to think that the Saqqara bird is anything out of the ordinary until you hand it over to an aerodynamics expert to take a closer look at it, and they tell you that the design is aerodynamically perfect. Could it be that it isn't a bird at all? Is it supposed to represent a glider? 
The carving was found in a tomb in Saqqara toward the end of the 19th century and is somewhere around 2,200 years old. Some people believe it to be a so-called out-of-place object because of its tail design. The eyes and beak suggest that it's supposed to represent a hawk, but the square tail is more reminiscent of the design you'd see on the back of an aircraft. The thin, tapered wings are closer to those of a plane than a bird, too. And it doesn't have any etchings to represent feathers. A scaled-up model of the Saqqara bird was made during the 1970s and was proven to be capable of gliding in the wind. We can make various kinds of glass nowadays. From standard glass to plexiglass, shatterproof glass, and bulletproof glass. You might think that the latter three are comparatively recent inventions. But some people believe that the ancient Romans were capable of making flexible glass. And some glass artifacts we've recovered from ancient Roman sites lend credence to that idea. Glass making was common in the Roman Empire, but it's said to be during the time of Tiberius Caesar that flexible glass came along. Records of flexible glass making appear in the records of both Pliny the Elder and Petronius although flexible glass appears to have been made during Tiberius Caesar's reign. It's said that the emperor had the workshop of the glassmaker responsible closed down, rather than allowing for the practice to become widespread, because he feared it would become more valuable than gold or silver. Actual evidence of the story is thin on the ground, but it wouldn't have been impossible in theory for unbreakable glass to be made using elements available to the Romans. Boric acid ran in the steam vents of the Tuscan Marima, just north of Rome, and if boric acid is added to a glass mixture, it can be used to make very hard glass. Around 30 miles east of the city of Abancay in Peru, you'll find an archaeological site called Saihuti, home of the incredible Saihuti monolith. In times of antiquity, this site was the epicenter of the Inca people's religious festivals and ceremonies, with water gods playing an important role in those ceremonies. It's thought that the monolith might have been a tribute of sorts to those water gods, but it's just as possible that it's an incredibly detailed scale model of an irrigation system. Over 200 shapes are carved into the rock, including cats, frogs, and lizards. The top of the monolith is a topographic model of the surrounding area and includes ponds, rivers, water tunnels, and other paths for water to run down. It might be that the Inca poured water onto the model and watched the path it took before deciding whether to replicate the model and carve the same channels into the earth. If so, that would arguably make them more considerate and careful city planners than many people working in similar roles today. You've seen the Saqqara bird. Now check out the Saqqara disc. It bears that name because it was discovered in North Saqqara, Egypt in 1936. But it also goes by the name Sabu disc or Schist disc. Upon seeing it for the first time, most people are struck by the same thought. It looks like the steering wheel of a modern car. It can't possibly be that because it's 5,000 years old. The age gives us another problem. Because the artifact is wheel-shaped and our current version of history tells us that the ancient Egyptians hadn't invented the wheel by that point. The disc is made from a particularly delicate rock, and at only one inch thick, it could easily shatter if dropped or hit in the wrong place. Constructing it was a meticulous process for somebody, but who and why? Alternative theories put forward for its purpose include the idea that it might be an especially elaborate candlestick holder. But if it's a candlestick holder, why haven't we found anything else like it in all the years we've been excavating ancient Egyptian sites? We give up. Maybe it is the steering wheel of an ancient spacecraft after all. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.